Yeah, welcome everyone to day three of EA Global Summit 2021. This session is by Stephen Maguire from Spark Services Australia presenting the session about repository updates and administrations made easy with model add in recipes. So uh, quickly handing over the session to you, Stephen, please take Great. it forward. Thank you. Uh, greetings and welcome uh, everyone to this presentation on the repository updates and administration made easy with uh, model add-ins. My name is Stephen McGuire. I'm the CEO and Principal Architect and Consultant at Spark Services here in Melbourne, Australia. We're going to do something a little different today. I'm going to give you a peek inside our development models and show you how we develop the tools that we use to administer repositories. We're going to spend a lot of time <clears throat> looking at practical examples inside Enterprise Architect. Um, and then we're going to ask you to join us later in creating administration recipes that everyone can use and enjoy. Briefly, the topics that we'll cover is a, a brief look at an opportunity or a modeling administration problem, a look at the current solutions and then the repository extension framework solution to this problem, an overview of Link.js and enumerables, and a summary of how we arrived at the solution, including the changing Sparks ecosystem, including tools such as Prolaborate, and a detailed look at the enumerables object and its power, and an overview of the execution model using a, a Postman metaphor. So let's uh, let's dive in. So here's an example problem. Uh, we have a, um, a modeler, a power modeler or an administrator, and I, that what they say is that as a power modeler, I want to update the author for selected elements. I want to change the author based on the element type, the stereotype, uh, and status. So if we try to do this enterprise architect through the user interface, um, we would go to the project authors, uh, the people's uh, window, and we can't through here change the authors in mass. Effectively, the authors are stamped onto objects as they are created. If we go to the properties uh, window, we could only change an author for a particular uh, item, a diagram or a, an element at a time. So how would we find the elements? Uh, running a search would help us, but it has some limitations. Uh, and then how would we update each element? Well, traditionally, if we looked at scripting, uh, which is what uh, a lot of people use to manipulate models. Um, this is not a script for that particular problem, but it shows you the kind of things that you might be used to scripting. It's a bit confronting for certainly for non-programmer or, or retired programmer types, people that have moved on to other jobs. Uh, and there are lots of uh, structures in there, for loops and uh, control structures and if statements and conditional statements. So let's have a look at um, the repository extension framework solution to this problem. So we have this object called the enumerables. Please don't worry about the syntax at the moment. It might all look a little bit cryptic, but I can assure you by the end of the session, um, you'll have a much better understanding of what's going on. Some of you, in fact, may already use the enumerables either in uh, C Sharp or uh, JavaScript. Essentially, um, what we're doing is we're telling um, this engine that we want to um, select from the enterprise architect tree so we have our cursor on something. We say we want to look at packages, elements, and diagrams. And then we traverse down the tree, selecting uh, elements. And in this case, we want to look at the elements that each package is associated with, because each, each element, each package has an associated element. We want to log some results. Um, and then we want to use um, a where clause to restrict uh, what we want to see. And in this case, we want uh, where the type is class, the stereotype is utility, um, and the author is Isaac Newton. And then for each of those, we want to set a property uh, called uh, status. We want to set it to approved. Um, this is a compact and intuitive, but extremely powerful notation. If you look underneath in the um, quite fine script, I've to get that onto one line, I've reduced the font size. Um, I hope you can see that. But you can see that the whole thing can be done in a single line of code. We, uh, we do it in the expanded form uh, because it's much more maintainable. So we wouldn't recommend this uh, this method down the bottom, but it just shows you how compact that is. And effectively, um, the tree will walk through potentially millions of items in the tree and also the mathematical graph that the elements are um, connected with. So um, here's the practical uh, demonstration. So let's have a look at this. We've organized uh, these uh, add-in methods into what we call cookbooks. And we're going to talk a lot about that in, in uh, later on. What we're planning to do is to create uh, a large number of cookbooks that will be useful for people uh, with administration uh, problems or opportunities. And they uh, can use these cookbooks as the basis of 
uh, creating the recipes in creating solutions. So let's jump in now and have a look at um, Enterprise Architect. And this is in Cookbook A01. And what we want to do is change um, the uh, the status. So let's jump over to Enterprise Architect and let's have a um, let's have a look here. I'll just um, close these windows for a minute and I'll jump up to the um, uh, navigation window here and open that. So this will be the starting point. You're probably familiar, if you're familiar with Enterprise Architect, you'll be familiar with these uh, windows. So um, this is, you're looking now at our development uh, models that we use to create uh, models to do manipulate the repository. Um, and we're gonna look at these uh, cookbooks. So we use the navigation models to um, drill down through um, some of these uh, items. I'll close off this. Um, we're going to go into cookbooks. The cookbooks are ordered, uh, are ordered into themes, into recipe themes. So we've got two themes here. Uh, and think about, you know, cookbooks in the real world. You could have, um, you know, a Mediterranean cookbook or you could have an Italian cookbook, uh, Italian food, or you could have a, a dinner party cookbook that uh, had, you know, covered all sorts of different recipes uh, for a dinner party. And you could also have cookbooks for very specific things such as, um, you know, how to make a, a particular source or how to how to work with pastry and baking. So lots of opportunities there. Let's go into this theme. We haven't named these yet, and we're, that's why we want some contribution from uh, people like yourselves in the community uh, to figure out how we should organize these cookbooks. We've got some ideas, but we'd like to uh, get your ideas. So cookbook uh, one, let's have a look in there, um, and we'll go down into, um, into this cookbook. So here we have uh, a, JavaScript add-in. Now, if you're not familiar with model add-ins, this is a relatively new um, part of Enterprise Architect, and it allows you to work much more in a much more rigorous way, um, creating uh, programmatic extensions. Uh, the scripting environment has limitations, and in many ways leads to some sort of cottage ind industry, uh, you know, kind of work. It, it, it shouldn't, but it tends because of the way that uh, it's set up. It's a, um, it's not a it can't be version controlled and there are all sorts of other things about the scripting environment. Don't get me wrong, it's a very powerful thing and it's a very welcomed part of the tool, uh, most certainly. But when you start to want to do uh, more rigorous uh, you know, manipulation of the model, the model add-ins is a, is a very powerful uh, way to work. So here we have this model add-in. You can see a number of methods there, a number of attributes, and it's linking to this SS Scripts library, which is a large library um, that contains uh, all of the code for the repository um, extension framework. Now, let's just look at uh, one of these items. We wanted to change the status. So we'll look in the recipe and there's a status item there. So let's click on that, right mouse click and say, edit internal code. This pops us into um, the coding window. So you, you'll notice this is not the scripting window. This is the, the full blown uh, coding window where I can um, you know, do things like um, you know, hide line numbers and all sorts of things. In fact, Enterprise Architect itself is developed uh, you know, through uh, this coding window. So let's have a look at our problem. Um, we wanna change um, the status. And so we've got it, the two status here is uh, approved. We want to do that when uh, the element uh, or package is uh, the from author is Isaac Newton, and the the, uh, the, the type uh, is a class, and the from uh, stereotype is a utility. Now, let's um, let's look at what the way that we've got this organised. Uh, what we've done is um, we've created uh, test rigs, and so we have a number of test rigs here, and I'll show you uh, that now. Um, so we have these test rigs, and they're all organised there, and that's part of how we uh, test whether our add-ins are doing the right thing and uh, are fit for uh, release into the field. Um, let's go in this element, if you know Enterprise Architect, we can go in here and say, let's find in all diagrams um, and let's look at the test rig mappings. So um, here we have test rig mappings and we're saying, let's have a look at our uh, element there, change status, and it's linked to test rig uh, number one. So let's right mouse click on there and say, let's find that in the um, project browser. And there it is there. And let's have a look at uh, test rig one and what's going on. So the test rig has been uh, devised to test uh, the action of the, of the add-in and make sure it's doing the right thing. Let's have a look at this, uh, this diagram here and it will explain a little bit um, as to what the model is set up. So we have a number of classes and notice that they're nested inside each other. You can see that in the project 
uh, in the browser and you can see it also in the diagram. Some of these elements have got a utility uh, stereotype. Um, some of them don't. Some of them have um, a name of Isaac Newton as the author. Some of them uh, have Nikolai Tesla as the author. So if we're expecting this to work, certainly the thing must be a class and all of these things obey the class um, the, the class um, problem. And um, three of them uh, are utilities. This one here, however, is not, even though it's by Isaac Newton. This utility one here um, is both, um, uh, so let me, both um, the author is Isaac Newton and it's a utility. So um, let's have a look. Now, I just, uh, what we do with this, just using some of the machinery of Enterprise Architect, we're going to go to the design and make sure that we have the latest copy of this. Um, so I'm going to close this um, di diagram for a minute. So we use baselines to ensure that we can rerun the tests. So on test rig, uh, 001, we're going to go to uh, the baseline window and we're going to say, um, let's uh, restore it to this baseline. So um, we'll restore that. That ensures that we've got the latest uh, model that we can test with. That goes through a few uh, windows opening up uh, and doing the baseline comparison. That should all finish in a minute. Um, now we've got our test rig there. Let's, um, let's go back and have a look at this and uh, have a look at our diagram. And we can see here that these uh, these two elements have got proposed as the status and we're wanting to change that to um, uh, to approved. So let's select that uh, guy there. Let's go to our recipes, which come off the specialised ribbon. Here they are all over here, they're, they're add-ins. And if we go to the manage add-ins, you can see that they've all been enabled. Um, and the administrator group is the only group that has access to them. Um, and it was cookbook number one. And uh, we were going to go to elements and we we're going to change uh, the status. So let's do that. And before we do, let's just check our output window. Um, it's all clear. So check the status, um, check the package into elements, change, uh, and we'll go for status there. You can see here in the output window, we're using a console timer and a console info uh, or console info method um, to report the things that we've found. And so that was in the cookbook. Um, remember we had a dot log there, which was logging what we found. Let's go and have a look at the things and see whether um, this one's been changed to approved. It was proposed. Um, this one here has been remains proposed because the author is Nikola Tesla and not um, um, and not the author that we specified as Isaac Newton. This one has changed um, because the author was Isaac Newton and it was a utility. This one should not have changed because even though it's written by Isaac Newton, it's not um, it's not doesn't have a stereotype. So let's, um, that's a quick, very quick look at, um, at uh, an example. Let's go back to our, um, uh, to our presentation. So here's a, a very simple uh, look at that code. We've got a header block, we've got some uh, variable declarations, and we've got uh, this enumerable section. And like I said, don't, uh, don't worry about that. We will cover that uh, in, in detail in a, in a minute. But you can see that uh, the code is very compact and it's very powerful. And if there were a million elements in that repository, it would have updated a million of those elements. And the conditions we put in, you know, weren't uh, all of that sophisticated, all of that uh, tricky, but we could have all sorts of incredibly tricky things. You know, show me the elements that only um, Wendy created between these two dates um, that are in this package. Um, that were that are attached to uh, have a uh, a relationship to to uh, this other element. So lots and lots of uh, possibilities there. But the the, uh, the syntax is relatively straightforward. A closer look at the enumerables. Um, so um, there's a mistake there on that slide. Um, that's the enumerable uh, object there. It shouldn't say log the result. That's the enumerable uh, object. Um, and here we say from the EA um, selection tree. This tree can contain any EA collection example method parameters, even though they don't appear in the tree. So any 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 collection that we want to put in there, uh, we can put in to that EA uh, selection tree. And uh, the magic will happen. It will traverse the tree uh, and not only the tree, but the whole graph uh, of the elements. Then we have a select that manipulates uh, the returned items and says, OK, well, what do we want? Now, if you know anything about or know a little bit about Enterprise Architect, 
the package element uh, is a little bit odd. It, uh, in, the, in the properties window, it has a status and has uh, other properties. Those properties don't actually belong to the package. They belong to an element that's a surrogate uh, to uh, the package. And that itself is actually an element. And so what we're dealing with there is um, a package as a namespace and an element. Then we log the result um, using template literals. So if you're a bit of a um, JavaScript person or you've been doing some uh, modern coding, you'll know that this uh, li template, template literals allows us to uh, substitute in basically a variable and use these, uh, uses these back ticks, these, um, these back uh, slashes there. Um, we then restrict or filter uh, the set of items um, where the type is equal to the from type and the author is equal to the from author. Uh, I left the stereotype out of this one just to fit it on the page, but um, that was there. Um, and then we um, we convert the we set the property to status. Now this is using a framework object um, that simplifies coding. We have introduced this object because we want to ensure that um, uh, that we simplify some of the properties. Most of the time we don't touch uh, any of the enterprise architect. Uh, methods, we don't wrap them up, and there are occasions when it's easier to do this. Um, we Let's have a look, quick look at this, the first enumerables uh, example. So um, here's an example, um, the distinct extension method returns a new collection of unique elements from the given collection. So we have, um, we have a large number of uh, examples that are in uh, one of the recipe books, and, and we're going to have a look at a, a number of those now and just have a bit of a a bit of a, uh, a play with them really and, and, and just explore uh, some of those. So we'll flick back over to um, Enterprise Architect um, and let's just do a bit of a, um, a bit of a clean up here with these things. It's very easy to get a lot of windows open. So let's just go close all. Um, I'll just, um, I don't know why I closed my navigation window. I'll just open that up back again because that's kind of handy. The cookbook that we're going to look at and we have a number of them up here, so let's have a quick look. Got this uh, cookbook too. Now this contains a lot of the uh, standard uh, Link.js methods, uh, and they're all implemented inside Enterprise Architect. So we've um, we've implemented all of those inside Enterprise Architect. Uh, the recipe book hasn't been finished. You will notice that some of these range down, range two haven't been completed. So as I said a little bit earlier, we're giving you a look into our development environment and what we're going to do is offer an invitation to people um, to join a community of, uh, of power modelers or administrators, librarians, uh, to start uh, contributing and it's going to be a, a kind of, we'll put up some problems, we're going to, uh, we'll have a forum set up in a, uh, by early next week uh, and that's going to allow people to, uh, you know, ask for a recipe uh, and then other people to uh, provide that recipe and what we'll do is we'll build up uh, a whole bank of these uh, these things that, as a community of users, that we can uh, we can all use uh, together. So let's have a look at this. This uh, this distinct one was actually a set based one. So again, we'll look at our um, look at our output here, um, and we'll go back to that uh, cookbook, and we'll say it was a set based one, and it said um, distinct uh, the distinct array. Let's just run it um, and see what happens. Um, menu distinct items distinct array clicked. So let's go and look at that cookbook. It was um, cookbook number two, and I think it will be in um, in this uh, theme too. Uh, cookbook number two, and uh, we'll look, look at the adding codes. We're, we're, we're driving, drilling down now into this adding code, and you can see that there's a bunch of, you know, quite a few methods in there. Um, and let's have a look if we can um, find um, that uh, method. So it's a set method. There it is there, set distinct array. Let's open it up and have a look at the uh, the code. Extremely uh, straightforward code, nothing very simple about it, but incredibly uh, incredibly powerful. We've got uh, an example there of a, an array of numbers and an array of strings. And if you look at it, the code suddenly becomes very simple. This dot enumerable, so, uh, and then from colors, so from the thing, uh, the data that we're selecting from, in this case, uh, an array of strings. Uh, and then we apply this distinct, method to that, log it and uh, enforce the result. So um, we would expect that, you know, reads repeated there a couple of times and uh, so is um, uh, so is Indigo. So in our result, we, we, uh, we just get the distinct list. Now, this is going to be very powerful. Uh, in this case, uh, they're not things that we would manipulate in EA and they've been included in here just to give you 
um, a very simple and soft introduction to these things. Later in other recipes, we'll uh, we'll do you know lots uh, more interesting things. And you know arrays are a very useful thing in enterprise architect. Here we have um, uh, another example here. Choice. Um, let's just you know do that one, and we get uh, this string array. We haven't looked at the data, but you can see the um, the output of that. If we look in here, um, matches string. Um, that was a the one that we did there was a generating and it was um, choice so we could have a look at that and that's the uh, the method there so again uh, very simple uh, the array is in line with the um, you know the thing there numerable dot choice log and force it we'll come back to the log and force but they're the things that they're the methods that actually um, execute but before that we're just kind of creating a plan of what we're going to do but a whole bunch of um, whole bunch of things there let's have a look at um, one here a little bit lower um, uh, there's a regex one there there's um, a JSON one there I'm just looking for that at the moment um, let me have a look set distinct um, regex from object node list array um, simple one I can't see that one I'll run it in the I'll run it as the example anyway um, should be able to see it I'm not seeing it there um, let's just run it anyway I'm pretty sure that um, Convert to JSON. Um, Oopsie daisy. Miss the menu then. Um, convert to JSON, um, and um, we get that um, we get that list uh, there. So um, I don't know why my eyes can't see that uh, example there. It was definitely there somewhere. Um, uh, there we go to JSON. So here we have um, a. Uh, an array of objects, uh, JavaScript objects, and again, uh, this time we, we the output of the enumerables is uh, going to go into a, a, uh, a variable, and then we're going to uh, execute that, um, and then convert the JSON to string to log it to the console. But you can see um, that's very that's a useful uh, function, and again, we'll have recipes that show how this would be useful inside um, Enterprise Architect. Um, we've got you know ones that convert to um, to XML as well, so. Um, there's a number of different uh, things. We have a very uh, rich XML parsing uh, part of the repository as well. Um, so that's kind of useful. But there's a whole lot of uh, different ones here, you know, arrays by example. So um, ordering then uh, by array. So let's have a quick look at that one. Um, so it's an ordering one. It's a then by, uh, then by example. So let's run that. Um, and we are able to order those uh, by age uh, ascending. So uh, again, if you think about some of the problems that you'll have in enterprise architect and administration, you'll see that some of these things are going to be um, going to be very useful. Let's um, let's go back to cookbook number one, um, and so we'll close this um, we'll close this page. We'll go back on this page here, back to our uh, themes, and go back into that, and we'll close this window that we've got open. Back into our themes. Uh, look at one. And um, let's look at um, a couple of other things. I'd like this to be, you know, kind of practical where you can see um, what we're doing. So let's have a look at some of the other ones, uh, you know, slightly more uh, complicated one. So here's an interesting one, uh, authors uh, by search. So we've, we've got a, um, a standard way to change uh, an author of, a, of an element. So let's have a look at this simple one here um, and we'll launch the internal editor so we can see the code at the same time, uh, move, the browser over a little and here we have uh, an example where uh, we are just changing the author it's very similar to the one that we looked at um, we're writing out to the console using uh, this template string uh, method uh, and we've also uh, put that someone's put a debug in here uh, while they were working with it as I said you're you know coming into our development environment to put a console info in there uh, saying uh, a boo um, so um, that's a um, that's an example, uh, quite simple. Let's have a look at another one. Um, this is using uh, search, so it's a very similar thing. But here, um, we we are doing a from uh, repository get element by query. So the from clause is the source of the elements is coming from uh, the query. So um, we're actually running like a uh, a query, like when you pr press you know model search uh, to find the elements. We're running that, and we're looking for the from author. Using an extended search. Now, this is a built-in part of 
the enterprise architect uh, scripting things. We haven't invented this. All we've done is wired it into the enumerables to make it much easier uh, for you to get to. So um, again, a very powerful thing. Um, then the other thing is we can look at that even uh, another uh, way, and that is uh, using uh, SQL. So um, we can inside our uh, inside our enumerable do a from EA SQL, and that way we can just send uh, SQL code uh, to EA to get uh, some answers back. Now this might be a much more efficient thing to do uh, with something like uh, Author. R remember, we're not we're not doing anything sinister with the SQL. It, it um, you know it's a very uh, it's a very brave person um, and a little bit foolish who goes into uh, the database and starts manipulating things with SQL. This is just selecting, it's not updating, and we would absolutely encourage you um, not to be doing that. You can't do that through this interface anyway, so you can't run SQL updates through here at all. You can only, uh, you can only do the updates through enumerables, which eventually ends up with, um, you know, with uh, um, the Enterprise Architect API code. So, um, you know, lots of, the, let's have a look at this, um, uh, parameter name change or uh, the change type one here. So here we've got an example of um, we we want to change the type of um, a parameter. So if you think about your uh, enterprise architect repositories, we've got a um, an element and the element has got um, methods, operations, and those operations have parameters and the parameters have types. So you can see with just a few lines of the enumerables code, we're able to do something uh, quite powerful. Uh, so we're going to change the type. Let's have a look at that in a um, in an example. So let's go here again to our uh, friend finding all diagrams. Uh, we've got our test rig mapping. Go back to that again. We've seen this before. Uh, and change parameter uh, type. There it is there, and it's using test rig number seven. So um, let's go. Uh, that's the name, that's the type. Yeah, both of them are using that. So let's go to that and find in the browser window. Uh, there it is. And let's just check that uh, it's in the right state. We, I'll just see that before we, um, uh, before we, here's our operations, before we run it. Here's our features window. Let's just go and have a look. This is just preliminary things to go. Okay, those are char and char and float. So let's, um, Let's go back to our test rig here. Let's make sure our output is uh, here. I'm going to clear this window, but it's actually going to go to um, number one. I'll clear that. We can put clears in usually the console.clear. I don't think uh, we've done that in this particular method. So let's um, choose our test rig. And we've got a number of classes here with different uh, things in them. So, you know, let's have a look and see again what. Um, operations, there's a few chars in there, they're all chars. Let's have a look and see what happens when we run our uh, cookbook. So um, it's what we're uh, running on is uh, an element and we're looking at methods uh, and we're looking at parameters and we're saying we're going to change the type. So let's run that. And that looked like it ran too quickly. So um, let's see whether something actually happened. Uh, changing the parameters found A. Uh, one, two, and B, one, two. So it's found those ones. Let's go back and, and look at those. Class A, one, two, it's changed uh, those to a string, which is what it was uh, reported to do. And the other one that it was supposed to do was um, B, one. So based on the uh, based on the particular uh, parameters, it's, um, it's changing those things. So remember that we had the parameters where it was type char and the author was Isaac Newton. So um, the other authors uh, weren't Isaac Newton in the other cases. This one was Albert Einstein, and um, this one was Isaac Newton, but there's, um, it's not the, the right, it doesn't uh, meet some other condition. So um, let's, um, we're having had a look at that, let's go back to our uh, presentation and uh, move uh, forward a little bit. Um, a, quick, a quick history of how we arrived in that. In, in about the year 2000, we, we were very early adopters. Uh, we live in the, the same region as Jeffrey Sparks, uh, I met uh, Jeffrey Sparks very uh, early on, uh, and you know I've seen the tool uh, just grow to uh, amazing strengths, and the amount of uh, functionality and the things that it can do is just amazing, which makes the problem of maintaining repositories um, even more difficult. In in about um, 2008, we started building 
uh, proprietary scripts to administer the repositories and uh, we did that for quite a few years. In 2014, or you know, we started using some sophisticated exploring tree walkers and uh, graph algorithms to facilitate um, the increasing demands. Now, these these became quite difficult. We um, I, I found that uh, that it, my programming skills, which were you know which were sharp at one stage, but as I you know took on other roles, uh, they became more blunt, and I found it quite difficult to understand the very complex algorithms. In 2018, um, a developer that we've been working with us, who is a senior developer who's now retiring, uh, Ian Hogan, came to me with this example of the innumerables, uh, and he sent it to me one Friday afternoon. Uh, and for the first time, I went, "Wow, uh, this is this is incredible. I I can understand this code uh, easily, and I can change it, um, and I understand what's going on. I have a mathematics background, so you know, walking trees and graphs and things was quite natural to me. Um, and then, 2000 and, uh, 2021, we began to productize uh, the code base and build up a rich set of examples. Uh, and our intention is to make a vibrant community of requesters." people requesting recipes and contributors with a, a, a wide range of cookbooks. So, you know, as I said, you know, dinner party cookbooks, um, you know, Mediterranean food, uh, American, you know, traditional food, uh, all sorts of things. Um, this is the execution pyramid. Um, I'll go through this quickly. Uh, you can look at it yourself in the presentation. Enterprise Architect is the base uh, where all of the information is residing. There's a JavaScript engine, Enumerable sits on top of that, and then the repository extension framework sits on top of the Enumerables. Your recipes and your work will sit on top of uh, the ref, so there's lots of layers there. Um, why is this all happening? Well, one of the reasons it's happening is because Prolaborate came along and uh, you know started um, making some uh, noise in uh, the world. Essentially, people uh, started uh, getting access to information in the models in a way that was pleasing to them, in a way that suited them. So, um, you know, it, it's a very welcomed addition to the uh, the Sparks product ecosystem. Um, but it, it means that there's lots of users that have come along. WebEA is another tool that uh, also gives people ex you know, exposure to the model, and the ProCloud server is there behind um, driving the the whole thing. Now. Modeling information is uh, is being accumulated all the time. Uh, we, you know, Enterprise Architect is the great accumulator and equaliser, and you can see here all sorts of things that can go into the repository and, and a better position to be in here. Obviously, there are some other tools like, um, you know, Jira and SharePoint that have their, their purpose, and uh, we're not saying that those things should be incorporated into the repository, um, but they can be linked to through the extensions. Um, but this imported content uh, needs to be uh, synthesized and the, the the elements that are that are uh, brought into the repository from the extensions, the Jira stories, um, the SharePoint documents, they all need um, to be um, you know to be synthesized. Um, and adding things like annual cost to a catalog of imported application components, that's a kind of quite typical thing that people want to do. So we're reaching this wider audience. Now there are th more than 30 integrations that Enterprise Architect has and Prolaborate has a number itself. I've only put one on this diagram because Frankly, it would just get uh, too busy. Um, but the summary of it is that, that the repository information is now reaching a much wider audience, and this means that repositories need to be refactored and new elements imported and linked. Um, and being able to do this in an ordered, repeatable, and well-managed way is critical success. Now, with the model add-ins versus the scripts, we can version control uh, the scripts. We can run code bases that are much more um, uh, much more rigorous than you do with scripting. As I said before, the scripting has absolutely got its purpose and you know we still use it. But um, to be doing uh, serious manipulations of models, it's best to be using um, the add-ins and it's best in our mind to be using something like uh, the ref. Um, let's have a quick look at these. I'm not going to spend time on this. We lost a bit of time uh, earlier. <clears throat> but here's a bit of a background of the, the, the stakeholders and drivers and the motivation for what we're doing. Um, the uptake of Enterprise Architect uh, as a modeling tool is increasing, extended reach, we talked about that, uh, increase in extensions to other tools, increase in imported content, uh, and the need to manipulate models. You may see yourself as one of those uh, stakeholders in there. Um, and um, let's quickly have a, I'm just going to jump back to uh, the model and I'm going to show you um, just part of, you know, where our modeling is uh, going on. So you can see how we've arrived at this uh, solution. So some of the constraints, let's just look, take a quick look at the constraints and we won't worry about looking at the other things. But um, these constraints really gave my colleague Ian the, the sort of the framework uh, to, you know, to arrive at the solution. It must allow existing EA syntax to be used. 
we had a developer that um, that went down a different path and wrapped everything up with uh, uh, with framework uh, methods, but that meant that you know people couldn't use the repository. People that you that would have to learn a whole new way of doing things. So this was critical to the new direction. Uh, and you know, making mistakes, um, going down the wrong path is you know it's a really important part of uh, of learning. And you know, we um, we're no different to. Uh, to any other development place. We make mistakes and we learn from them, hopefully. It must be based on an open source library. Uh, so that's the link, um, the link JS. It must be flexible and intuitive. It must handle mathematical graphs um, and uh, trees. It must handle sets of items. So it does all of those, uh, of those things. We've got you know, other principles that we can look at and goals and drivers and stakeholders. But let's just flick back to our um, presentation and, and move on. We, we've looked at some relatively uh, trivial e examples, and we, we need to to get an understanding of what the product's doing. So I, I make no apologies uh, for that. Um, hopefully you can see uh, from those simple examples the power of what it can do. Here's a much more, uh, you know, a, a much more sort of field, a field example, if you like. Someone's got an existing Archimate model. Now, they may have been working uh, with Archimate 2 and then, you know, version 3, um, and they've got a model. We've deliberately just, you know, uh, used driver A, capability A. It makes it much easier for our uh, test beds to, to work. So, um, we've got uh, this this model. And Prior Rates come along, uh, and uh, I think um, there, there were some sessions on uh, application portfolios, for example, which is a, an important thing in enterprise architecture. Some of you who work in that space, um, and most the the lingua franca or the the common language that people use is Archimate. But Archimate is a is a very um, syntactically uh, poor language and a semantically um, poor language. They they've deliberately created it like uh, like that. It's not um, it's I'm not casting aspersions on the language, but it's not as rich as UML. So one of the important things is to be able to enrich the language. Now, up at the top of the screen here, this is the model that someone's got, an existing Archimate model. And then up at the top of the screen, we've got uh, an Archimate application component, which we've specialized into our own component using Enterprise Architect's built-in profile mechanism. Now, suddenly, um, the, the people who are using Prolaborate, the business people, the, the, the non-modeling community that get such value out of that tool, uh, suddenly, that they want to see things like, you know, what was the uh, what was the upfront cost of the application? What's the annual cost? Who are the, what's the vendor? What's the lifecycle status? Security, strategic um, class, the technical owner, the operational date, the decommission date, the business owner. All of this can be visualised uh, through EA as well, but um, but can reach a greater audience with uh, Prolaborate. So. Um, and this is the result. We we're, we're going to convert this. This is something that you know comes up all the time. It's something that you know it, it crosses uh, for many customers. It crosses uh, the path when we're doing consulting work. Uh, this is something that we have to do uh, first. We develop a profile. Uh, we we figure out how to, how the people want it visualized in uh, Prolaborate, and then uh, we construct uh, the application component. Th this is a relatively simple one. In real life, it's probably going to be. A little bit more complex, but uh, it it shows you there's the annual cost. You can see that, um, you know, or the and the upfront cost was twenty two thousand, seven thousand. Um, we've got our business owners and things. Let's um, let's now dive into this and and have a look at converting um, the profile as a, a sort of a richer example. So, um, we're going to look at a different cookbook, and we've just started this cookbook. Um, and there's going to be a profiles cookbook, and um, here we can see that we can convert from Archimate, from BPMN, uh, from DMN, from CMMM, from you know SysML, all sorts of different things that we can uh, convert from, with the intention of adding the extra elements. So let's have a look at that uh, cookbook, and that was uh, cookbook number four. And if we go back to our, let's close all of these things for a minute, close all, and we'll go back to our uh, home diagram, and we'll navigate to um, navigate to the uh, cookbooks. So we go to the cookbooks, it's in a theme, I think it's in theme one, uh, and it's cookbook four. Let's have a look at that, drill down into uh, the uh, model, and um, let's have a look at uh, this one. We'll go um, edit internal code, and we've got that there. Now, this one is a little bit different. Uh, here we've got our enumerables. This time we call a function, um, convert to profile, uh, and we also uh, do do action uh, further up. That's simply um, 
that simply calls a method. So we don't have to just stay in these enumerables thing. We can launch out into a, a method. And here this method is quite simply going to convert the profile from a um, uh, from a Archimate uh, one. And I'm not going to go into the details of this uh, code, but let's have a look again at running this as an example. And so let's go here again and uh, look for um, related elements. Uh, whoopsie daisy, not that. Finding all diagrams. Could have gone, could have gone on that one, but it's easier to go through this one. Finding all diagrams. Um, cookbook four test rib, rib, rig mappings. Um, there it is. There, it's the architecture one. Let's go and have a look at that. Finding the project browser. Um, here it is. Here, let's have a quick look at um, the diagram, and um, we'll see that um, all these elements. That's the diagram we had in our picture. And you can see that they're in the stereotype in the properties window, you can see they're all Archimate. So let's run our uh, let's run our script on that. And we can see in the application component um, that we don't have uh, any attributes like we wanted. We wanted, you know, cost. They're not built in attributes and we need we need to add them. So just before we do that, we're gonna look at our, um, we'll just look at our profiles. We have a profile built in here um, and this is the profile that we'll be converting to. So, um, I'll have a quick quick little look at that. We looked at it in the in the screen. Here's our application component, and uh, we've implemented that profile, and we'll um, we're going to uh, convert this model. So we'll go back to our test rig, um, wherever it was, test rig 15, and we'll run the um, convert program again. Looking at our output window, making sure that we're um, there, I'll make a little bit more room, and it was cookbook number four. And let's clear that output for a minute, and Let's go convert. I'll just go back and make sure I've got that selected. Uh, and let's go cookbook for convert and from Archimate. Um, it does the work. Let's go back into our diagram and look at our application component. And here we see now we've got uh, it converted to have um, decommission date. We can you know, put that date into some time in the future using all of these things. Now, these are built into Enterprise Architect. We didn't uh, create these. These are just part of the Enterprise Architect thing. The lifecycle status, um, let's choose, um, we're implementing it, um, and uh, we can put in upfront costs and, and things. So um, that's um, that's a, a, a richer world example, but you can see again that the, the code, um, you know, the code is actually quite trivial. So let's go back to our uh, presentation. And I'm moving along a bit quickly because we, Lost a little bit of time uh, earlier on. We lost about 10 minutes. Um, so um, this was our first example. We've covered that a little bit. I'm not going to go um, back over that. Lambda expressions, they're, they're pretty key. If you look in, um, in this thing, Lambda expressions come up all the time. All they are is simply collapsed, um, really think about them as collapsed methods that don't have, can't have um, variables and things in them. Uh, and we can send two parameters there, so we can you can see this one here where we're doing something with uh, connectors and the and the element that's the supplier end of the connector or the um, uh, target end of the connector. Um, so um, I won't cover those template literals. We spoke about that a little bit, but you know here they are again here. So the the, the syntax becomes debunked. You know we we we're able to kind of look through the syntax and suddenly it becomes very understandable. And I remember when. Uh, when this uh, engineer first came to me, uh, it was a bit daunting, and you know, I I thought, well, I I haven't, I don't, I didn't have a modern programming background. I, I spent I spent the last couple of years uh, going back and um, uh, and very enjoyably uh, picking up a lot more of the uh, modern programming skills. Uh, I had a I used to run an, a big R and D center, so I have a strong programming background. But um, you know, like a lot of us that have got into modeling, uh, it's got a little bit uh, rusty. But I've really enjoyed getting uh, back into it and using um, these new ways of doing things. Um, let's have a quick look. This is what the the uh, the enumerables is doing. It's moving down through the tree. So I'm not going to go into this in detail, but you can see that you know packages contain other packages that contain elements that contain other elements, and then they come down to children, and that can go on infinitum. Um, um, I'm going to jump over these things here. These are the collections that we support. Uh, all of these collections. Um, you know, tests and resources, metrics, all of those things, the method connections, you saw us update a, a parameter from the element, we got the methods, we got the parameter, we got the types, uh, we updated that in about, you know, five lines of code. Receptions and signals, I'm going to uh, figure out, this is part of the add-in model, and, it, you know, this, what's, this what is what makes model add-in add so powerful, because you can use 
uh, all, there are all sorts of model adding events and broadcast events, so very, very powerful. Um, JavaScript console, we implement that, so lots of, uh, lots of things there. I'm going to skip over these uh, slides about graphs. Um, you can look at them in your own time. Um, but I want to just talk about this uh, Postman model of lazy execution. So when we have uh, an enumerable here uh, in this top example here, it's like the Postman's planning the route. Nothing actually happens. The, the Postman's planning its route, but actually hasn't executed it. It's only when you do a log of force uh, or a do action or a do a, a for each that the enumerable gets forced. So this is him actually delivering or her delivering uh, the mail. This is the force and the log uh, create the execution. That's like the, um, uh, the postman moving along. So um, here we have another example. I won't go into this one, but we can do the do action thing along the way there as well. So that's another um, richer example. A peek under the hood. The code I've shown you is the code that recipe writers will write. This is the code that uh, developers will write underneath the hood, the, the prototype functions or the things that underpin all of this. Um, and again, uh, we can look at this a bit later. Comparison to SQL, um, it, uh, superficially the languages look similar, but they are actually different in the way that they execute. So um, I'm just going to talk about now about this community. Our, our vision uh, is to create a community of, uh, of model administrators, librarians, power modelers who uh, want to become part of uh, this, part of our, our teams to create um, create recipes. So there's kind of three different levels. Technical developers, we are looking uh, to get uh, some technical developers who have got the right skills to uh, help uh, develop that back end further. Uh, and then recipe creators, so you know, good JavaScript uh, developers, good API knowledge. So there'll be lots of you who probably fit into that category. Um, and then recipe requesters, people who just want um, the to uh, a recipe that does something for them. Um, to do that, we've um, we've tried to commercialize this in the in a in a way that uh, keeps the costs uh, down. We've got um, we, our plan is to have a, a personal and a um, professional and a corporate uh, version of the product. At the moment, we're, we, we, what we're saying to people is, please, um, if you're interested in this product and interested in seeing it develop, please join us uh, as a catalyst. Uh, the price is you know, really quite low. That's just going to seed um, some, you know, our ability to employ uh, a developer to do some work. And um, um, that's, that then will uh, feed into recipes. The forum will allow us to have lots more um, people contributing recipes and then people voting on them, uh, people answering those recipe uh, questions. So um, that's what we're, we're if, you, if you're interested in joining, we'd love to see you join as a catalyst um, and uh, that will give you, um, you know, uh, access to the, um, to, to any early versions, contributing recipes, your name as a, as a contributor would be written into the recipe, um, an early feature is a uh, release. So um, that's where we're at. Um, I want to say thank you to one and all for joining and um, apologise for the technical uh, delay we had in the beginning. So I've had to move through things a little bit more quickly. Uh, and a special thanks to Nizam, Dewey uh, and the Prolaborate team for organising the summit. It, it, it's a wonderful thing and uh, I'll hand back over to Dewey now. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. Uh, thanks, everyone. And as Stephen said, very apologies for the initial disruption on the session. And I'm sorry, Stephen to you too. Um, so thank you everyone for attending the session. We have a couple of discussions um, that needed uh, that need a detailed discussion by you, Stephen. So we'll uh -huh. be pasting those uh, pasting those discussions in Spark Services Australia channel. Please take forward the conversations from there. I think that will be much more um, uh, much more uh, space for you to give a detailed uh, explain explanation sure. to them. Great. All right. Yeah. Thank you. We'll see you in the uh, yeah. we'll see you in the Teams meeting. In MS Teams. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, uh, for your time during the session. So now, as said, um, Stephen will be available in MS Teams to have uh, elaborated discussions and answer further questions. The link to Microsoft Teams is pasted in the chat window for your quick reference. Also, kindly note that the recording of this video will be available in eaglobalsummit.com uh, with complete Q and A and discussions portal underneath the video after the summit we will be notifying you all by email once it is made available thank you everyone once again and thanks Stephen thank you thank you bye bye